Hey, good morning everyone. So, I just wanted to make a video to go over what dictionaries are a bit. And I think a few of you had some questions, so let's just go over that over here. So, uh, so the first thing which we want to talk about is, okay, what is a dictionary? Now, the textbook definition will say something like, oh, you know what? <coughs> it is an un ordered collection of key value pairs fine all that makes sense but it doesn't really make sense right so this is my definition this is a very simplified version of a definition if you get this I, I'd say understand this before understanding the textbook definition so my definition is is that it is an easy way to get slash access things by giving it a name or an ID okay so just have this in mind so we'll go over my definition with an example but before that let's just say that okay so if we if I want to define a dictionary now right uh, what is the what is the what is the syntax yes syntax is the word so what is the syntax for creating one so the syntax for creating one is basically it is you give it your name right so your variable name so I'll say it's a dictionary name and this is just one way of doing it you'll find multiple ways of doing this please refer to the class notes for that but I just want to go over one way so it's basically it's a so the the way if you, the, the, I, the name or the ID you want to give it is the key okay so this name or the id is the key over here and whatever you want to associate that with is the value so the key and the value are separated by this colon and an entire key value pair okay is separated using a comma this will be key to value to and again comma so this this tells python the comma tells python that, okay we finished our one key value pair and we're move, moving on to the next and so on so now there are certain rules to what these keys and values can be. So let's just go over them. The first rule is that your key can only, let's say just for the purpose of this course, can only be an integer, a string, or a tuple. Okay? And your value can be anything. By anything, I mean literally anything. Now this is extremely powerful, right? So now that we've gone over the syntax, let's go over an example, right? So let's say that I have a list of foods, right? And in the first, at the zeroth index, I want to store all the healthy foods. Let's say it's kale, uh, probably a banana, and let's say an apple right so these are healthy foods now after that at the at index one I want to store all the unhealthy foods so it's ice cream uh, debatable but whatever so it's ice cream it's uh, chocolates because it's sweet and I'd also go ahead and say something like cheesecake right super tasty but super unhealthy so now if I want to go ahead and print all the unhealthy foods I mean sorry all the healthy foods I'll go ahead and say print foods of zero right and then if I want to go ahead and say print all the healthy foods I'll go ahead and print foods of one so you see how it is on us to remember that all the healthy foods are in index zero and all the unhealthy foods are at index 1. So if I go ahead and run this cell, it's taking some time. Yeah. So you see, first it prints all the healthy foods and then it prints all the unhealthy foods. Now, if suppose you define this variable somewhere else in your code and somebody's reading your code and you just do print foods of 0, foods of 1, you say, like, oh, what, what is this? What does the user mean by zero and what does it mean by one so it's not that intuitive right so 
the code is not extremely readable. So for me personally, if I had to do something better, I would use a dictionary and do something like this. I'd say, you know what? Let me give the key as healthy and the value of that will be this list. So remember the key can only be a string, integer or a tuple. So over here it's a string and my value can be anything. So the key and the value are separated by a colon and now this entire pair of key and value will, after that I'll put a comma to tell Python that okay, I'm done with this. And then I'll go ahead and say unhealthy colon and I'll copy this list over here. So now, okay, so now I've defined my dictionary, right? So if we follow the syntax, you it's open and close curly braces. That is key to indicate that you it's what we're going to define as a dictionary, not a list or a tuple, right? So now I'll go ahead and say print foods. So now if I want to access anything from a dictionary, I'll put the square brackets and then I'll give it the key. So the key is healthy. And remember the key is a string, so I have to give it a string. I cannot do something like, oh, just say healthy like this, okay? So it's a string and then I'll say print foods. Oh, okay, I think food underscore dict, yes. Food underscore dict of un yeah, unhealthy. So now if I go ahead and run the cell, you see it prints the same thing for me, but now when I read it, it's saying it is way more readable. You're saying that, oh, print the foods of healthy. Oh, so you're saying print healthy foods. And then you come, you're come, coming here and saying at this and like print unhealthy foods. So you see this just makes the, it makes uh, accessing things way more easier. So let's go back to the my definition. It is an easy way to get or access things by giving them a name and ID. So you see over here, I'm accessing things via an index. But in a dictionary, I'm accessing things by giving it a name. So this list of mine has a name attached to it. This other list of mine also has a name attached to it. So this is the key problem which dictionaries solve. And I think this is something really cool, right? You don't have to remember the index and it's way more intuitive too. So this is one way of accessing elements in a dictionary. You put a square bracket after the, your variable name, right? and then you give it the key. Now, another way is, let's let's talk about uh, what is the, what is dot get, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So the other way I can probably do this is, let me, okay, let me not copy it. Let me just write it out. Print foods underscore dict dot get and in the brackets so because dot get is a function you'll use curly uh, you'll use your uh, round brackets and then i'll give it the key right and then i'll print unhealthy so you see it does the same printing for me but now the added advantage is that if i misspell this right if i say healthy it'll return none that means, oh, so it's unsuccessful. The code still ran, but it didn't give me an error. Now if I go back on top and I make the same mistake over here, you see Python stops the execution of the code. It stops the ex execution of the code right here and it says key error. So the key error basically is telling us that, hey, you know what, you gave a key which does not exist. But when you use the dot get method over here, and you give it a key which is not there, it'll just say, oh, you know what, this key is not there, so I'm not going to, I'm, I'm telling you that there's nothing stored over there. But the, the code the execution doesn't stop here, it goes ahead and executes this line too. And that is extremely important. So wherever you value that code execution shouldn't stop because you fail to access something from a dictionary, I would highly suggest to use the dot get instead of using the square bracket notation to access an element or the value in the dictionary, right? So now that we've got a good idea of this, let's put it back, okay, yep. So this is done. So we've gone through the dot get method and now let's do, let's have a little fun, right? So what the, 
the first thing which we wanted to do when we got a list was to iterate over it, right? So let's talk about iterating over dictionaries, right? So now, can we just do something like for i in range len of foos underscore dict, right? print foods underscore dict of i okay will this work okay let's try and run it it's not going to work right because now our dictionary is essentially a key and value pair so there's a really nice way of doing this in python so if you want both the key and value you say key for key comma value in your dictionary which is foods underscore dict dot items so the dot items is key is extremely important this is what is uh, needed over here to iterate over it and then i'll just go ahead and say print key comma value right so you see how it printed the key first so it goes in the dictionary and it extracts everything and it says key is this and value associated with that is this and now i'm coming i'm going in the for loop and i'm printing it so we can do some interesting stuff with this. So let me, because I know values, value is a list. I can just say value dot sort, right? So now if I print this, okay, why is this showing none? Oh, let's look into it. Oh, okay, yeah. Because it's doing in place sorting, I need to sort it first and then print it, okay. Yeah, so you see now it, my list has been sorted too, right? So say I want to uh, sort, now if I go ahead and I print my foods underscore dict over here, you can see that healthy and uh, unhealthy, both the values of that have been sorted, right? So this is something extremely useful, which you can use with dictionaries, that you can do something like this and then basically work through it, right? So this is one way, this is a really nice way of iterating over dictionaries. I think there's some other way too, and you should definitely check the notes for that. And now let's look at the next thing of importance over here, which is, what is dot clear right so let's say that uh, python is being used your program is being used for a check-in into a web page right so uh, it's collecting your user details right so the id is let's say the email is uh, let's say what did I try with? Oh yeah, so I love Cinnabon at email.com, okay? And password is diabetes, if that's what you headed towards, okay? So yeah, so this is my user details, right? And say that I use these to log into a page and the page gives me this message saying that, okay, verification, is in progress and it says okay you're verified and logging you in right now amazing right so now after a page logs me in i don't want suppose if i don't want it to remember my password or any of my details which i use it to log in so this, this after this point i've just logged in so i can still go ahead and do something like user underscore details of the password right so if I go ahead and run this you see my password is still stored now what if I don't want this to be stored so I'll say something like okay erasing all uh, information collected and then I'll come ahead I'll come here and I'll do user underscore details dot clear this what will this basically do is if I go ahead and now if I go ahead and print the dictionary let's just see what happens right 
erasing all information collected and now this variable user underscore details is now an empty dictionary so you see everything all the contents of this dictionary have been erased so wherever this use case suffices if you want to do something like that dot clear will be extremely useful for that now since we've gone over this, there's one last thing I'd like to go over, which is dictionary comprehension. This is something I personally love. So let's say that uh, I want to calculate all the squares of a number, right? And uh, I want to store them in a dictionary. So I can go and do this all day. I can do something like zero is zero, one is one, two is four and so on but I'm a programmer and I'm lazy so I will say you know what Python is going to be a better way to do this so let me do let me just do that right so so list comprehension is basically so remember in, uh, I mean sorry so in list comprehension we use the square brackets so the square square brackets it tells Python that okay whatever is inside this is a list similarly for dictionaries we always use the curly brackets this tells Python that, okay, now what are we, whatever we're going to do is going to be a dictionary. So, so let's write the last part, right? For i in range 10. Okay, now I have my variable i and it's going to be, it's going to go from 0 to 10. Now, what do I want to do with it? So, I'm saying, I'm going to say, hey, let my key be i. And for the value of it, I want to store the square of it. Right? So, I go ahead and then I... If I do this and then I go ahead and print squares, you see, so the key is zero, and so the so the key is three over here, and the value is nine. The key is four, and the value is its square sixteen. So you see, this is a, another way of creating something and storing it right so let me just go over one more thing so i call this squares underscore two and let me do this let me say string of i right if i go ahead and then i print this you see i'm basically getting away let me just it better so it's more clear and visible so you see these two lists are essentially they're, they're similar but they're not the same now what is the difference the difference is that the key over here is an integer right and the key in the second second dictionary over here is a string now this is extremely important because if I want to access see the square of 5 right so I'll do something like square squares of 5 so you see, because my key is an integer for this dictionary, I will give it an integer, right? And it'll give me the value over there. But if I go ahead and I do, for my second dictionary, if I do squares of five, it is going to give me a key error. Saying that, hey, I don't have this key. What are you saying? But if I just put this in a string, because that's how I defined it over here in list comprehension, I mean in dictionary comprehension. And now if I run this cell, you see it gives me 25. So there's a subtle difference between these two. Just try to understand it. And that's it for now. I think with the help of this, you should have a good idea of dictionaries and how to work with them. And say, uh, I think there should be enough to solve problem four. I think there's a small hint somewhere in here, which I went over. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, put it on Piazza and we'll go over it over there.